involved with this since phase two and then part of the revision team and I taught it as the lead faculty at Olympic and then I've been a part of this training team as well. And I've been so excited to, to be able to go around the country and share with people this new approach really to teaching it, for a lot of us. I mean, it was a huge shift for me personally at the beginning and it was because of my students' successes and their feedback to me that just kept motivating me to, to be involved and to keep going. And the other thing I did not mention earlier, and I think Ursula had kind of touched on this, it really informed how I teach in the rest of our program. So what happened was after this, because of the great strides that I saw our students make, when then I was shifted to teaching on some higher level classes, I said, we need, we need to go hybrid, we need to go flipped, we need to get technology there front and center for our students, and it's been very successful. And the students who were coming out of IDEA were very sad at the prospect of not having something like that to continue on with, having that work at home to do. So um, this has not only been a wonderful experience within IDEA, but has also really led our program on to expanding and growing as well. So I'm excited to share with you our experience and, and uh, this curriculum. Am I just introducing myself? <laughs> I'm Adria, Adria Katka from North Seattle College. And um, I think you've heard that I've been involved with this project from the beginning, but it's been really exciting to just see it go through many phases um, of growth and change. And it's really wonderful to be able to be, um, I think after having taken taken this work and taken this training to various parts of our country over the last um, nine months or so. It's really fun to be able to be back here in Washington um, in our home state, but also with many instructors that we've worked with through the development phases of this project um, and seeing ways in which it's, it's changed even here at home and the ways it's being used and certainly to connect with um, many new colleagues. So thank you so much for the time that you're investing to be here with us and to dig in and unpack all the parts of this curriculum. We're going to get into just a warm-up activity right away and then we will let you know more as we go. So thanks so much. Great. So uh, the other thing I'd just like to add is over these next two days there's sort of four puzzle pieces that we want to put together for you really coming from the instructional side and that's what what is there in Canvas and as a part of the pre-work? That's the first puzzle piece and that's what we'll be focusing on in this session. And then moving into another area which is the instructional guide and what support materials are provided for instruction. And then tomorrow, the other two pieces will be focusing on how those first two integrate. So how are we planning for a lesson? How are we figuring out what we need to do during the lesson? So. I, I feel like tomorrow you're going to have a very clear sense these puzzle pieces will come together and I have a feeling you'll all feel very confident at the end of the day tomorrow to start going in and getting the modules you're looking for. But to get us started, if you printed your program on page 11, you have a find someone who activity. And if you did not, we'll pull it up here on the screen with some questions and if you could take a few minutes to just circulate and find someone who. I also recommend if one of these questions is really foreign to you and you find someone who has done it, take down an email. <laughs> you might want to touch base with them later. <laughs> okay, and it'll just be a five minute quick, quick activity, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, hopefully you had a chance to find some people who. <laughs> but one thing we really want to be sure that we're doing over the next few days is giving you an experience similar to what an IDEA student would have, which is one way we've intentionally sort of designed this training, which um, these questions give you a little bit of a preview because all of the questions that are on there are things you will need to be able to do during uh, while teaching IDEA 
don't be too scared about the have you ever built a website. You're not creating <laughs> a whole new business website, but there is one module where that kind of touches on that. It's not a pretext. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, in this particular session, again, we're going to be focusing on the canvas part of it, which is the pre-work, which is really the foundation of the course. So one thing I'd like to say is in this program, we really don't use the word homework. We really want to very immediately shift over to that idea of pre-work. This is something that needs to be done before they come to class. So um, we want to make sure that after this particular session, you feel that you have a strong foundational understanding of the online components and that you feel familiar with the layout and navigation. You can locate the instructor resources that you can use the instructional guide and some of the key features within the instructional guide uh, to find what you need. And experience what it's like to be an IDEA student. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that in Canvas, you have been put in as a student for this experience. Because we're all in the same class, if somebody changes something, it changes it for everybody. But it also allows you to see that interface that the students have as well. So there are things that we will be doing up here or talking about that you won't see on your screen until tomorrow. And later in the day, you'll be given a chance to go in as a teacher and be able to utilize all these features. But for right now, some of this is just going to be demonstration uh, through some of this morning. Okay. So the first thing we want to talk about is the scope and sequence, which you saw just a little bit this morning when Will showed you the three columns of all the topics. So we want to go ahead and open the full scope and sequence, which is in the back of your program if you printed it. And oh, this right there, you've got the page right there. Yes, I was, yeah. Thank you, okay, thank you, page 45. Uh, and if you didn't print it, you have access to this later and you can just look up here on the screen. But you'll see that this uh, Excel booklet has four tabs down at the bottom, one for each quarter. So for those of you who teach out of Washington, um, we teach on the quarter system, so these are designed for 10 week, 10 week quarters. And so you just click on the tab to find it. And they're all broken down the same way. On, on the far left, you will see the module title. So this is the theme or topic of that particular module. Then we have te tech objectives, writing, grammar, and math. I promise you speaking and listening is heavily included in the face-to-face. -face. It's not necessarily called out here. Sometimes people will ask about that, but it absolutely is very much included in, in the program itself. So you can just go across and see for each what's included. And it's not very clear for me up close here, but can you see the, the shaded banding? OK, there is a real intentionality to those bandings. These particular uh, modules within the same band are very heavily scaffolded one from the next. So although this is OER, and you can go in and you can take things apart and you can rework them. We strongly suggest keeping those modules together, certainly until you would have a sense of what you would need to backfill if you were to take one out. So again, you do have a copy of the full scope and sequence, but because this session is just focusing on fall quarter, we're going to look specifically at two of the modules. These are banded together. So the two that we'll be looking at are study skills, an American education system. And again, these are in the fall, the fall quarter. Yes. So we'd like you to take just a few minutes uh, together with a few people at your table. If you could have a, a short discussion, we will come back to the slide in just a moment if you don't have it printed out. But we'd like you to have just a, a, a short discussion about where do you see the connection between these two modules, as well as what do you think is significant about these themes? Why would we have chosen to include these themes, and how do they seem to be connected as modules? So we'll just give you a few minutes to discuss that, and then we'll come back together. OK?
Okay, if we can just come back together and we'd love to hear some of your ideas. Where are some of the connections that you see between these two modules? Would anybody like to share? Yeah. Great. So she's saying the tech objectives, noticing we're first creating a Google Doc and then extending out from there to more skills within that. Absolutely. Anything else? Something with the writing, perhaps? Right, so here, uh, she's saying it's, a, it's about writing. So here we have, you know, we're using graphic organizers right now. We're just really organizing our ideas, um, either based on reading or writing. And then in the next, you're moving towards constructing sentences. Um, so really here, you're not exactly teaching the writing process, but you're teaching parts of it, right? We're doing pre-writing, we're doing organizing, and it's just kind of embedded in there. It's not so explicit, but it's definitely woven in. So absolutely, those are two great observations for seeing that. Um, and the second question was about the topics. Why, why are these two particular topics or themes ones that we would include or important for students? Yeah. Yeah, very well said, absolutely, some great reasons. Anybody would like to add to that or? Great, somebody in one of our opening sessions asked about students who come in without necessarily um, full educational backgrounds, you know, depending on what their opportunities were before they came to us. There's also this sense of that study skill piece may really be the first time they're actually learning strategies and, oh, excuse me, uh, and learning what it is to be a student and those expectations. So thank you so much, that was very well put. Okay. Great, well thank you. So let's take just a couple minutes here to review some of what you've already heard quite a bit about from Will this morning in terms of some of the benefits of IDEA. Um, one real key is really just that it is a, a highly contextualized curriculum. And I wanna clarify the use of that term because I know that as we've um, been in some different parts of the country in different states, we have learned, found, that sometimes uh, the word contextualized, it has a highly coded, very specific meaning that it is, we're talking about something is contextualized to a specific um, job task or a specific employment field. And that's not the way that we're using the word in our context, Ugh, context, context, context. But in this context, when we say context, <laughs> when we say contextualized, we just mean that it's theme focused as opposed to being sort of like a grammar organized curriculum or some other type of approach. It's really based on particular themes um, and that you know it's really got you know math embedded in it and these things like this. But um, the way that the curriculum is developed and delivered as not only a flipped curriculum where it's you do that lecture part at home and then we do practice in class. It's not only that, but it really is blended that, that these two parts are not meant to be delivered or experienced in a kind of siloed fashion, that they're really it really is very important that they're not freestanding curricula, but it really is one integrated model. And so when Shannon said that this, uh, not this morning, but in session one here, we're going to look a lot at what's available to students online and your tools online. And then we're going to look at what happens in the classroom in the face-to-face -face environment in our second session. But tomorrow when we look a lot more at how those are blended together, we can really see the hybrid fashion of it. Not just that it's a dual platform, but it really is brought together. And it's important um, in making the most of the power of these tools. There's a lot going on here in terms of 
fostering student independence, student empowerment. Um, we talked a little bit this morning about how this is a, a pretty personalized kind of curriculum um, and kind of uh, just gets, gets at what students need but give, gives it to them in a package that will hopefully be right for them. I don't mean to suggest that it's a silver bullet or that it's the magic pill, but just that there is something in there for just about every type of student and that each student will have a different experience depending on what they bring to it. But also that it's controlled, the, the speed, the pacing, um, sort of the depth. A lot of these things are really controlled by the student at their individual level. And so it means that they can experience things more than once. Um, they can get different kinds of feedback. They can go down different paths depending on what really pops for them. And so all of this is, it, these are some really critical pieces. Of course, also, you know, and we'll continue to remind you in case you don't believe it the first time or the second time, that it really is all open source material, either things that have been created by the creators of the project um, and that we're saying, yes, use it, or they're let's say images or things that we may have found online, but we've made a very, very concerted effort to make sure that everything that we either create or that we've taken for use is all available as an open educational resource. So it's all available to you. There's no charge to use any of it. Uh, we encourage you to use it, adapt it for your own uses, for your own settings, and to make of it what you will. This one says stand up. We don't have to stand quite yet, but I'll give you a couple of instructions. We had a very good question this morning in the panel discussion, I think, about have you ever had a student who didn't do their pre-work? <laughs> and, and I laughed because as Jody sort of looked down the line to the five of us who were sitting at the table, she was saying, anyone? And we were looking at her and saying, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, of course we have students who, for whatever reason, don't necessarily accomplish their pre-work. That's not exactly what this question is about, but you'll see where we're headed here. The idea here, what we want to talk about is, you know, for some of us, coming into the idea of teaching in a hybrid or a blended model is a new thing. Um, doing something with online instruction is entirely new. Or maybe it's we've done a bit of dabbling, or maybe we've experienced that as a student, but not as an instructor. Um, but all of us have instructed in a setting where students doing some practice outside of class is desirable. I, I think I can say that with some certainty, right? And so, what that outside of class work looks like in this model is different, to be sure, because most of it is something that's being set up ahead of time as opposed to after the fact practice. But if we can think about um, what it is that might help, how we might kind of frame this or help students to understand the, the concept of doing outside of class work and the concept of doing that as pre-work, and that might be a paradigm shift, understanding for us and for them. If we can think about that, the understanding the importance, and then also how we can encourage students to complete it, um, whether that is how we incentivize it or, or what have you. But just, just talking and thinking about how we can help students to get there and get that done. So let's take a few minutes, just in your table groups. Um, these table group sizes will work just fine. We have some smaller ones and some bigger ones, but it looks like this will all be functional. I don't think anyone has to move for purposes of this activity. We'll bring you one gigantic sticky note. We all love these, don't we? And we'll bring you one marker. I think we may only have four markers, but I'll find one more. Um, we'll just ask you to have a short conversation with your table mates in answering uh, these two questions, and then we'll do a little bit of sharing afterward, but we'll do it in maybe a different way from what you're expecting. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your ideas. It's fun to see the ideas that are coming up. And we would like to do a little bit of a share out 
which doesn't surprise you, but as Shannon mentioned, um, and in our list of objectives for the session, we wanted to have you experience what it's like to be an idea student. And we don't just mean what it feels like to be confused by looking at a bunch of things in Canvas. Um, we do wanna try to layer in some of the types of activities that we do in a face-to-face -face class with IDEA students into this setting. And so one of those is what we call a gallery walk. Some of you will have done that before. For some of you, it may be new. There's not any actual art except the art of your ideas and your brilliance. Um, but the general idea with a gallery walk is that whatever task students have been um, assigned to create, produce, whatever the product is, that those would just be on display for students to wander and peruse and see the results. And so rather than asking for someone to speak in a share out, we'll just ask you to lay out your work. Actually, I think this time they're sticky so we can just post them to the wall. And as long as they stay standing, sticking, um, you can just walk and take a look at some of the ideas. Um, and we'll share our ideas with each other in that way. Take your phone if you want pictures as you walk around, a good way to capture. All right, thanks everyone. If we can come back to our seats. Just to wrap up this activity together. These are all really wonderful and it's it's so much fun to see the different I the different directions, I guess, um, five different tables sitting all very close together, yet your conversations took some very different directions, and I like that. Um, I see one over here that's about dividing a class, you saw it, dividing the class into two groups. We have a control group, <laughs> we have a test group. 
<laughs> you do the pre-work, you don't, and then see how we do. So that's a, that's a thought. Um, certainly we can incentivize with things like treats. Treats can be an incentive. The sense of satisfaction that you get from being able to participate is another kind of incentive. Um, Shannon and I have developed a spidey sense about there's always going to be at least one cooking reference. And so I said to her, Shannon, I haven't been able to circulate and see all the ideas yet. Is there a cooking reference? She said, there it is, <laughs> the recipe. <laughs> And we do, we get, that's right, we're filling the belly. We're also, we can preheat the oven. We can lay out our ingredients, but there's, there's always a cooking yeah. metaphor here, right? But it works, it really works. Anyway, thank you for sharing those ideas. We're gonna be getting back into, can, or we're gonna get into Canvas now. And there's one more very quick thing that I'd like to show you um, before Shannon starts to really give you a tour. Um, I'm going to click over to Canvas so that we can all see the same thing together. I mentioned to you earlier, uh, before we really started the session, this idea of clicking to close or collapse each of the modules so that this page is much more navigable. There are two more things that I want to say just as a very quick orientation to the layout of this page that may be helpful to you. One is that when you switch to a new um, anytime you click on something in Canvas, it's automatically going to pop up this left menu navigation bar. And if you need a little more real estate on the rest of your screen, if you click on the stripes at the very top, it will collapse that bar. So you can just get more width for the, for the main part of what you want to see. So again, you can click to open or close that. Um, and then the other thing that I'd like you to see is just a very quick um, way to understand the way that this is laid out our course today because we, what you have here is a combination of workshop modules and student modules that are layered in together. They're layered in with a logical chronology, but if you don't know that, it just looks like chaos. So very quickly, I'll point out that these first two modules, the one with the agenda and the one that's for the director's session that's going on across in the ballroom over there, those are of course conference modules. What we're doing right now is in focus session one, and I know that many of you have found that. If you open that module, you'll see two copies of the presentation that we're using, a PowerPoint version and a Google slide version. And then you'll see two handouts that we're using in this, okay? Then below that, you're gonna see two student modules. These are the two that we'll be looking at together from the fall quarter. After that, you'll see the focus session two, that's a workshop module, and then two student modules, personal inventory and career exploration. So I'm not gonna go all the way down, but just to give you a sense, that's a, the kind of chronology that we'll work through. So um, there you go. You want me to stay there? Thank you so much. So is everybody ready to get your hands in there? We've been talking a lot on that sort of overview uh, level, and now we're going to get down into the nitty gritty. So hopefully everybody is in Canvas, has Canvas open. If anybody is having a problem, please raise your hand, and Adria can come over and, and help you get set up there. So uh, idea is really composed of two buckets, is the way I think of it in my head. One bucket is in Canvas, and this is where all of the pre-work is. This is what the students need to do at home, and all of the electronic uh, pieces are housed from there or linked to from there. The other bucket is in a Google Drive. A Google Drive that has been given to you. So this is not something that is inside of your own Google, if you, have, if you happen to have Gmail. This is one that you will link directly to. And just as a reminder, as we walk through these next couple of slides, it's going to be more of a demonstration because you are in there as a student. So uh, you, can, you can be looking at your screen and up here, or you can just look up here for now. And in a few minutes, you're going to get some hands-on time to, to be in there poking around. So um, again, these two buckets, Canvas and the Google Drive. So we want to look at both of those locations so you feel comfortable with navigating between them and knowing where to look for what information. So we'll start with Canvas. 
And there's two reasons that different groups of people are going to go there. The instructor needs it because you are going to link to your instructor resources from Canvas. So it will link you out to the Google Drive, but you'll find that link there. Of course, all of the content modules are there, so you're getting all of the work for the students in there. Tech skills pre and post assessment. We'll actually be talking about this tomorrow in one of the sessions, but those are sort of standalone pieces outside of any particular module, and we'll look at those. This is where you're going to go and give your feedback and your grades to the students, where you'll be accessing their assignments that they've submitted, and you will have a chance to see the student view. Again, you're seeing the student view today, but as we're going to learn in just a moment, you have the ability to publish and unpublish items, and because it's OER, you're gonna be able to move things around and take things out and add things in. You wanna make sure that that is done properly. So after you've kind of done your work, you can go into student view and see the interface that they will have and just ensure that you don't accidentally have something viewable to them or in the wrong place. So that, those would be the reasons for the instructor to go there. And the students, of course, they're going in there to access their pre-work. Uh, during some of the pre-work, there are links within their pages to handouts that they might need. It might be a transcript, it might be a handout that they could print from home, but those links will be directly embedded in the pages for the student. That's where they will see, obviously, your feedback and their grades. And then, as we talked about this morning, one of the greatest features of having it there is their ability to continue going back to review the material, retake quizzes, um, as many times as they'd like. So the two reasons that everybody's going into Canvas, and I'd say that's the, you know, the, the bulk of it. Canvas is the bigger bucket, as far as the students are concerned, because the students will not be going to the Google Drive. Okay, so when I talked about publishing and unpublishing, I'll show you in a moment, you don't want to give students access to it. It's your lesson plans, you know, so, I mean, I guess you could, but <laughs> they would have ac access to everything. Um, so that is something that would be unpublished. So uh, in a moment, I'll show you, but this is where the face to, there are four folders, the face-to-face -face components, and these are all of the handouts that you need for each module. So for each module, you have one folder with all the handouts. Online components, um, this is not a folder I think that instructors use very often, but there are things about copywriting in there and some other pieces, just if you needed access to that, you have it. Works Cited and Raw Materials, and then the Instructional Guide. Who can tell me, what's the Instructional Guide? Yeah. Thank you, I knew we had some experience in the room. We use this word instructional guide, and I will try to remember to say that in full, but just internally, we've all been calling it the IG. So if you hear me refer to the IG today, please know it's the instructional guide, which is actually your lesson plan. And we'll be taking a look at that as well. Okay. Oh, so I'm going to, so we're gonna take a few minutes just to look through Canvas and the layout. One of the very first things that Adria already touched on today is the importance of expanding and collapsing the, um, oh boy, this doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna stay there for me. There we go. Uh, expanding and collapsing the actual modules. As you will see, it gets very lengthy. And for students to be navigating down that page by even week three, it can be a little overwhelming. So I know one thing I do is after I talk about it, but then at the end of every week, I remind them in class, you know, go ahead and close that up. We're done with that one. You can always go back, but just a reminder to them to also help for their navigation. So. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and open study skills. And like I say, you're welcome to just follow along on the screen or if you want to be, you know, moving through on your computer as well. But I'm just going to be demonstrating some things here and then you'll have time to go in. So each module, so when you open, when you open a quarter's worth of work, for example, you'll have 10 modules, meaning you'll have 10 sort of units there with these carrots next to it. Each of them have the title of that unit at the top, so this is study skills. And within study skills, there are five subtopics. The way that this curriculum was designed is that each subtopic correlates to a day of the week. 
So assuming you have a five-day week, then on Monday, I would be doing the subtopic of successful students. Now, I'll just say a lot of schools didn't have a five-day week. I, I didn't either. So later, we can kind of talk a little bit more about how you might adjust kind of where you draw your lines, and it, it, it's absolutely easy to do. It just takes a little, little bit of pre-planning, extra pre-planning in the beginning. But just to let you know, this one on day one, I'd be coming in Monday for successful students. Tuesday would be reading strategies. Wednesday would be note-taking and time management. And then test-taking strategies Thursday. <clears throat> and more graphic organizers on Friday. Each subtopic has no more than five activities. That was, it's kind of like a template. Each module has five subtopics, and each subtopic had no more than five activities. However, on occasion, you will see, for example, up here, that there were six on this day, but the very last one here says, do in class. So that is something that this idea of publishing and unpublishing becomes really important. Uh, at the beginning of a quarter, I would just open all of my modules and scan down to see the in-class items. I'm not going to do it right now because it will, for the other group, it will make it disappear. But <laughs> if I was to click on this little button here and take away the green check mark, it would unpublish it. So as the instructor, I could still see it, but it would disappear from your view. And you don't want students to do that at home for a variety of reasons. It may be that you haven't pre-taught what they need for that, or or it might involve some group work. So the in-class activities, you just want to be thoughtful of unpublishing those before they go. I think, yeah, okay, oh, thank you, okay. <laughs> so you'll notice that there's kind of a, a, a naming convention to the types of acti activities that students do. I'm gonna come around here, that's very bright. You heard uh, several times this morning about learn activities. Up there, this one says learn successful students. Anytime you see something titled a learn, it is the new vocabulary words. And there are typically three learns in every module. Okay, so over different days, but within the module. And then every learn, as Will mentioned this morning, is followed by a discuss. And they are given a sentence stem to really talk about their own life experiences related to that topic. And it really does guide them and direct them to try and use the vocabulary they just learned. So they're really trying to make a correlation between those two activities. And then we have read, listen, watch. So they'll be able to read it, but also listen to somebody speaking it, which is fabulous, especially um, you know, for your lower level students who, again, are just getting those sounds. And I know that got brought up this morning, so that's a really nice support for some of the lower level students. They'll have to do something here, they're going to watch here, and they're going to submit something here. And maybe you've noticed these little icons next to it. Each of those icons, for those of you who are not in Canvas, it basically re relates to the kind of activity that will be in that page. So if you see something that's just like a piece of paper with kind of the little folded down cor corner, this is information. Something's just being delivered to them. A, a little bit, I guess, like your lecture in class. I'm giving you the information here. When you see the little rocket ship, it is a quiz. That's a little bit of a misnomer on the learns, but just because of the system, it was how we had to build them within a, within a quiz setting, but it's really the first time they're learning it for a learn. But usually this is a quiz, so they've learned something, they've studied it, and now we're gonna test them on it. And of course the little kind of chat bubbles there for the discussion. And then there aren't a ton of these in here, but the piece of paper with the pencil on it, this is an assignment. So they're going to have to produce some kind of work and submit that. And the process to do that is a little different. And I, one of the reasons it's done in, in class up front to show students how to do that. So yes, you'll start to get a sense when I scan through here, I can look really quickly and say, how many quizzes are there this week? How much reading do they have? Are they watching a video? So the names and the icons really help me just quickly visually to understand what they're gonna be doing in there. And so we're gonna go back up to the top. Did anybody notice this little blue link here? Okay, we have this published for these trainings with you. But typically for a student, that would be what you would want that to be unpublished because that is your direct link into the Google Drive. 
where all of your lesson plans and class handouts are housed. So just to show you briefly, we're going to open that up. And often you have to click again to go into it. And on that earlier slide, I talked about these four folders that you would have in the Google Drive. So you can see here the face-to-face -face components. If I was to open that, I'd find all my handouts, online components. Excuse me, the online components, um, you'll get to look at this in a moment. This actually has the vocabulary from the Quizlet decks that they look at. So when I said I didn't go into that one earlier, I, excuse me, it's the cited work I don't go into often. But the online handout pieces I do. It's a wonderful, thank you. Um, it's a wonderful handout to give the students of the Quizlet deck in another way that they could study it. So, nope, where am I? Where did the actual, there we go. Uh, the work cited in raw materials, that's there as a reference for you, but you really won't need to go there. Really, the most important document here is the little blue icon. That is the document that is your instructional guide. And you'll get to explore that in just a moment, but I'll open it very briefly. Always has the title of the module at the top. This is the full week's title, not the subtopic, but for that full week. And it contains all of the information that you would need to complete your lessons for every day of the week. As you start looking through here later, you'll see at the top, there's a lot of different ways that sort of summaries and synopsis of what they're doing is presented. And then as you move further down the document, you get into the step-by-step -step details of the actual implementation of the lessons. So on page six is really where my first face-to-face -face detailed explanation starts. So does that make, does everybody sort of feel like, oh, okay, there's these two buckets. All the pre-work is over here and all of my instructional materials are over here in the Google Drive. Does that feel okay? Yeah, Judith. Thank you. And we're going to look, thank you so much, and I'll give a little heads up. We're going to talk more about that later, but Judith is just reminding us, no, that's great, that I think it's up here a little further. Yeah, um, <laughs> there we go. Just kind of at the bottom of page one and bleeding over onto page two. When we talked about these, these are aligned to the college career readiness anchors. So here is where you just get a quick snapshot of the anchors that relate to that particular module. Thank you so much, that's great. Okay, so. Now, you guys are probably pretty ready. Those fingers are probably itching to get in there and really start looking around and seeing the lay of the land. So we have an activity for you, a scavenger hunt. Again, a kind of activity the students would do actually within the curriculum. It is on page 12 if you were uh, able to print out the program. And if not, in just a moment, we will also have it up here uh, on the screen. And we're going to go ahead and give you, I think, uh, probably about 10 to 15 minutes there are 12 questions. We'd like you to please look at the um, study skills module. You're going to be both in the Canvas part of it and the Google Drive with, uh, within that bucket. And we'd like you please to answer these questions. So 10, 10, 15 minutes. OK, thank you. And if anybody has problems, again, accessing either of them or finding it, please raise your hands and we'll come around for sure.
maybe just about one more minute, and then we'll come together and just go over some of those answers. Okay, we'll take a few minutes now and go over the answers, and if there were any questions or people had problems locating anything, we can, uh, Adrienne will be up at the front kind of driving that so she can navigate to that to help you find it. So the first one, um, ho hopefully everybody felt comfortable expanding and contracting the modules. And then it asked you to click on the first blue link, and where did that take you? The Google Drive, absolutely. And where can you find the instructional guide? <laughs> In the Google Drive. <laughs> I'm sorry, some people like this kind of tile or grid view. I don't because I can't read the titles of any of the items. So I click here to get a list view and then I can see the full title or a fuller title, at least depending on the, your display size, so that you can see more of what's in there. But again, that's just a personal preference thing. UDL in action, multiple means of representation. I like the other view. <laughs> So I use the little tiles, but since you're driving it right now, choose the one you want. <laughs> so yeah, when you clicked on the blue link, it popped you into that uh, Google Drive where you were able to locate the instructional guide. So the next question is asking about what are the first five sections of the instructional guide, which is really talking about the first five that I very briefly referenced saying they're kind of overviews and synopsis of, of what are taught but not the actual instructions. So you can just check, and if you didn't find it, you can look up here. The first is module overview, which is kind of a, just a summary statement of what will be taught, followed by module outcomes. Those outcomes are also in Canvas for the students on one of their first pages. The college and career readiness standards, again, as Jody mentioned, those are linked to the uh, anchors. And the module delivery notes. I'm going, we will talk more about these later, but I really want to highlight these right now. And I'm curious, I see Judith going, yes. Um, uh, earlier, I referenced that there were about 60 people who had weekly phone calls through, these three, uh, through the three pilots. And every week, uh, people would have some of these, I wish I had known this, or if somebody was gonna teach it, I would tell them this. And all of those comments were collated, and these lists were created. So you can come into this without having to preview everything and come here and see, do I need to set up a guest speaker, a site visit? Do I need to do a little arts and crafts and cut up some fake money? Uh, there's all kinds of things on here. So uh, we just really wanna highlight and underscore the importance of previewing that before you're walking into class on Monday because there are times where you do need to set up guest speakers and things like that in advance. Yep, and my favorite, module at a glance. How many of you found that one? Yeah, okay, great, I see a lot of hands there. This is so wonderful because this is just, again, a quick snapshot of what the students do as pre-work at home for each subtopic and the follow-up activities that are in the face-to-face -face topic. So if I can jump to question number eight, and it asks, what is the third subtopic in this module? This is a great place to look. It's note-taking and time management. Adria, can you go up just to the top, just for a second, the very top of this one? Because here, this is their pre-class. Pre this is everything they do online. They come to class on Monday and we're doing successful students and we're doing these activities. On Monday they would go home, they would complete these activities for reading strategies and come into class and this is what we would do to follow up and practice and apply. Then for the third day of class, note taking and time management, 
and then what you would do in class. So before I start a module, I like to look there. I don't know if you found that, but I found this a really um, a good resource and support. Again, just that quick snapshot of what would be taught overall that week. By the way, for people who are doing not five days a week, this was also one of my best friends when I had to redraw what I needed to cover in a given day. So I guess I also just point to that for people on different types of schedules. Okay, um, handouts for face-to-face -face activities are in two places. Who can tell me where they found them? In the instructional guide, there's actually links to them if you got further down into the activity descriptions, and we'll look closer at that tomorrow. And of course, the folder that we looked at earlier, which is the face-to-face -face activities folder uh, within the instructional guide. Okay. Um, I do want to talk for a moment about making a copy. Was everybody successful at making a copy? OK, we're, we're going to talk about this. But there is a reason. Uh, does anybody know why you'd have to make a copy? Yeah, because you're, getting, you're gaining access to a master, a master drive. And any change made there is a change made for everybody. So when you want to modify, or on some handouts where you are required to modify, you need to save a copy from the master Google Drive into your own personal Google Drive. First, that requires you to be logged into your Google Drive. <laughs> so that's one thing we found at these trainings is people say, it won't save to mine, but they haven't logged in yet. So you first need to tell it where to direct, where to direct to. Yes, so after you save it, you have it now in two places. You can still link from you know, the instructional guide to our version of it, and you'll still have access to the master. But now in your own Google Drive, you're going to have the second copy of it, of which you can edit, add, delete, tweak, whatever you need to do to it. And so I just would like to have uh, Adria is up here. She's just going to quickly demonstrate how to do that. One way would be for me to just open a handout wherever I get it from, whether I go to the face-to-face -face components folder, we could practice that later, or whether I get it from a link inside the instructional guide itself. But if I open the handout and then I look up at the file menu up in the upper left, um, when I click there, I can see a couple of different ways to do this. One is um, if I can go to make a copy and I can click on that. I don't really want to make a copy right now. I already have copies of this, but I can make a copy. It'll allow me to name it. It can either say copy or uh, for my setting, I had set up a separate drive, um, not a separate drive, a separate folder just with all of my things for each of these modules. And so I can change it to say something like good and bad study habits, NSC, my school, uh, spring 18 something like that. Um, and then I can choose where it's going to save to. I don't want this to save in the face-to-face -face components folder. Um, I'll tell it to save to wherever I want it to be. And then I can click OK there. That's one way. In If you are someone who likes to work in Google Docs and is comfortable doing that, have at it. I, I do like to work in that um, more and more over time. If you are more comfortable and you prefer to work in Microsoft Office products, you can also click File and download this as a Word doc. Same thing, you can save it where you will, work with it as you will, but you can save it as a Word doc and then you're able to edit it and work with it in that way. You can print it, etc as you would do with any other Word doc. And just on that note, once you save one as your own, if you just made a personal choice that you wanted to edit something and update it versus it requires you to, I'd keep a little note on your desk or in on a file folder of the ones you've changed so you remember in the future, oh, I made my own version of this or I've already updated it so you know where to navigate to find the copy that you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it's a really good point. You want to be thoughtful of what edits you're making and what it's supporting out of the pre-work to make sure that it's still relevant as a follow-up activity to what they learned for sure. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, she's just, you know, if there was a different job task that you wanted to do. Or they mentioned earlier somebody didn't want uh, parent-teacher conferences. They wanted student-teacher conferences, and you could make those kind of smaller updates to them, too. But thank you. That is important. Okay, so um, we're, we're getting close to the end. I, I still want Adri to be able to cover one more thing, but I just I think I'd just like to go down to number 11, which is how many new vocabulary words are in a learn? 12. And a, a learn is always followed by what kind of activity? A discuss. And again, I th I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying there are three learns in each module. So there's a fair amount of new vocabulary. So that folder that said online components is just a great handout to print for your students and give to them to have, a, to have like a master packet of all the vocabulary they're learning. So hopefully everybody feels comfortable now having gotten a little deeper into them. In the next session, we're actually going to be looking more at the instructional guide and pieces like that. So I'm going to turn it over to Adria for our last bit here this session. Thank you. All right. Um, Please know that as we're going through things kind of quickly, there's a reason that we have four focus sessions and not just one focus session. So we'll be coming back to all of these concepts again, which is actually, come to think of it, another thing that's really key in the way that IDEA is set up as a curriculum for the students. This model um, circles back to a lot of things a lot of times. And so we'll be experiencing that as well. Um, and you'll be able to come at a lot of these different ideas, these different concepts um, from different angles over our couple of days together. All right, so we've seen a bit of an example of this already, but I'm going to come back and just remind us. Good. Um, we've got this, the computer sitting on an incline, which means the mouse is also on an incline, which means it keeps sliding down. <laughs> and so anyway, not everything's looking the way we expect it to all the time. Um, it's, it's good to know both for ourselves and our own sort of quick, quick reference understanding, but also um, to know for the students and for their ability to really engage pretty easily with this material, that everything is set up in a very, uh, very organized fashion. And I don't mean that as a, oh, it's so organized, pat on the back. I just mean it's, it's on a template. And so you will always know that a module has do you already know how many subtopics have you already, you've already gotten there, right? It's already five. You know it's five. I know you've heard it, but you've heard it enough times that you already know, and it's only 2.30. All right, so five. There are five subtopics. I'm, yes, and, and within a subtopic, do you know how many activities there might be? There will be five. Okay, there could sometimes be six, but if there were six, why would that be? Because one's a do in class. See, I'd say you don't need us, but you still do. <laughs> so stay. <laughs> All right, but you've got that. Um, so we know that information. It's also, let's see, it's good to know, again, that that layout will just continue to be the same module after module, subtopic after subtopic. And Shannon has alluded to this more than once and we will get um, we will be able to get into some more examples of it as we go but once again this is built on the type of idea that there would be five maybe two hour sessions per week to give you sort of nine to ten online hours and nine to ten face-to-face -face hours and if you don't teach on that type of schedule it's no problem but it just requires a little bit of you know, change in the way that you order things. And it's, it's a good idea, um, but also a not too difficult idea, I think, to think about that and how it will work. So for example, Shannon will talk a lot about how, well, it's written for nine hours, and I have nine hours, but my nine hours are three times three instead of two, 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 one. So Shannon will look through the activities, the amount of time that they might be expected to take in terms of the the Canvas portion, the on online pre-work, and then the face-to-face -face portion that we'll be getting into a little bit more later in the afternoon. And she'll just 
draw her lines in a different place um, so that if she gets through maybe in one day she'll get through one full sub subtopic and then just half of the next one but she'll take a look when she's assigning the pre-work to look at which face-to-face -face activities can I get to let me assign the pre-work that will support and prepare students coming into that so you see what I mean, but we'll get, you know, again, we can get into more specifics of it as it relates to you for your particular schedules. This is um, really just another way of looking at something like the module at a glance grid, that little green and white grid that was in the instructional guide. And as we look down this, we can see sort of that typical schedule. Here you see, oh, it's so shadowy. It's Feel like a Batman or something. Okay, so I can see subtopic successful students is listed here twice because it's listed both for the e-learning and the face-to-face. -face. Um, this says Sunday. It doesn't have to be Sunday. <laughs> Don't do it on Sunday. <laughs> you should rest on Sunday. Also, you should do your pre-work sooner. Um, anyway, but anyway, any time before Monday's class, let's say, um, they would do their two-ish hours of pre-work. Then they would come and have the face-to-face -face portion, the face-to-face -face activities related to that same subtopic. And then any time after class on Monday but before Tuesday, they would do the pre-work for Tuesday's reading strategies subtopic. So you can see it's sort of they, they, it's kind of like they straddle the days. And it's not a really difficult concept, but it takes a, just a little time at the beginning to help students understand. So we finished today we were ta we talked about successful students. Tomorrow we'll talk about reading strategies. But today I need you to now go home or go to the library or wherever and do your pre-work for reading strategies. Tomorrow when you come, that'll be our time to talk about that together and to practice together. All right. So there is, in addition to all the instructional guides that you're clicking to um, through your modules there in Canvas, and you'll so far, we've just clicked on the study skills module instructional guide, but you'll have instructional guides for each of the eight modules that we'll work through in our focus sessions. You'll see those there. But there is one instructional guide, just a sample one from a different module that's in your conference book. And so if you do have the printed version of that, you would find that, I think starting on page 97 is the header for the instructional guide. And then the module at a glance grid, I believe is on page 101, page 101. Um, if, you're, if you don't have a printed copy, don't worry about trying to find that in the PDF because that's just another online version, and you already have online versions. I just wanted you to know that if you have a paper copy, you can touch one now. Okay. <laughs> Feel free. Touch one now. All right. Yeah. I think that one is job skills and interviewing, the one that we included there. It's just one more module. All right. Well, we are going to move on and practice a bit of this concept with another module, a second module. So it's your turn now again, and we're going to open the next module. After study skills, we're going to go to the American Education System module. I'll click over to Canvas in a minute, but before I leave this screen, I'd just like to talk through these instructions, because then we're going to lose this slide, and I'd like to have Canvas up on the screen so we can kind of look at that together. Whoops. Okay. So, before I leave this screen, let's just go through. We're going to go to the American Education System module, which is the next one. We're going to click on the Learn and give you some time to really dig in and see that Learn activity and click around in it. You might have done a little bit of that in this previous scavenger hunt activity, but probably not much. So I'd like to give you some time. Thank you. Okay, we'll get, I'll show it. I'll, I'll go over there. I just want to walk through these directions. Um, the Learn, as Shannon mentioned, is called a quiz. It's built, kind of housed in the format of a quiz, not because we're trying to do some kind of summative assessment on students the minute that they get new vocabulary. That's not nice. But really, that's just the, the activity type in the Canvas 
platform that works best for housing different types of activities all collected together as one. So we'll give you some time to work through that activity and see how it's built, see how it operates. Um, and then if you have time after you do the learn, you can continue on and do the other activities that are in that first subtopic. The first subtopic is the American school system. So I'm going to click over now to Canvas so we can take a look at what all that means together. I'm back in Canvas. I have finished for now looking at the study skills module, so I'm going to click to collapse or close that module. Scroll down just a touch and open the American Education System module. Inside, the first thing that I'll see is the Google Drive folder, but for right now, you don't need to look at that, actually. For right now, we'd like to give you a chance to really explore some online pieces. That's really what we wanted to have as the focus for this first session. So you'll see the Google Drive folder. You can skip that for now. You'll see a listing of objectives for this module. And we do, most of us, I think, keep that published for the students. Um, but under the first subtopic, American School System, you can see a learn activity. And then you'll see a discussion and a few other content pages. So if you have time after the learn, go ahead and explore those. Inside the learn, again, you're going to find that it's built as a quiz. So when you click on it, my view will be slightly different from yours because you'll have a student view by default, and I haven't clicked over to a student view. But I can do, even from the teacher view, I can do what's called preview. On a quiz, I can do preview. And then, so I can kind of see what you see. You'll have a blue button that says, take this quiz, I think. So go ahead and click on that. And as you scroll down, you're going to find several different types of activities. Will gave us a quick, brief tour of that this morning in the opening session. One that I want to draw just a little bit of attention to is this read and speak activity, which comes after the initial list of vocabulary. Read and speak, this is the um, pronunciation practice. And there are a couple of things I'm going to point out about this. One, I'm going to go up to the top and collapse that left menu so that I can get a little more real estate. Oh, that looks so weird. And then um, what I'm going to do is do a little command or it might be control for you and go minus sign to shrink down. If that's a display issue for students, those are a couple of just common problems that can pop up. So sometimes collapsing that menu on the left or just changing your display size can help. Um, I'm sorry? Yeah. So one of the things, that, the first thing that I did was um, I did, there was this menu was open on the left. So I went to the top and just clicked to collapse that. And the second thing that I did, this is just a keyboard trick. Um, for me, it's on, an, on a Mac, it's the command key, that loopy funny one with a plus sign. If you're on a PC, then it's going to be control with the plus or minus sign. You can make your display larger or smaller. That's all. So, okay, sure. There you go. You can get a zoom. I think that's for your browser. Your browser maybe has a, a different zoom display that you can do. So you can get 90%, 125%, as you wish. OK. The, the last thing I want to mention, and then I swear I'm going to stop talking because I want you to have time to explore, is um, one of the things that students will learn as a part of the Intro to Idea module is how to record themselves, and you haven't had the benefit of working through that yet. So if you don't know yet, I'm going to tell you that when you get into that read and speak activity, um, you will find, you probably can't see it because it's so little up here, but you'll see it on your screen. Looks like a little TV screen with an arrow in the middle. Looks like it might be like a, a video or something. And if you click on that one, it's record and upload media. I'm going to mention, just as a caveat, that this function sometimes will work really, really well. But there's an issue of sort of the, the unique combination for different computers and different um, flash permissions and different Wi-Fi connection strength and 
what have you, right? There's this magical combination. And if you don't hit it right, <laughs> then sometimes you'll have issues that you might just need to figure out what works on your combination of technology in your setting, and then you'll know how it works, and then you can make it work magically for every student. I know that on my computer right now, in Chrome, that doesn't work. But I know that in my computer right now, if I go over to Safari, it works. So I could demonstrate it for you if you'd like. Um, but just know that if you click there and then it says Flash required, you might have to run a Flash update. You don't want to do that right now. Do it later. Um, if you have any issues, flag us and we'll see what we can do. But our answer might be, oh, maybe the Wi-Fi is not strong enough. Try again later. Or it might be, oh, you need to update your flash. Try again later. I swear it works and it's really cool. Yes? Uh huh. And then just upload it. Yeah. Absolutely. That, to that absolutely works as well. OK, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you. I, I do actually want to hop on to that. You guys, you guys can get going, start, start getting into Learn, but I just want to hop on to that because as we were talking earlier this morning about access to technology, if the majority of your students are working on tablets or mobile devices, um, the recording feature is one of the most problematic and one that is often the most difficult to access. So I don't know how to do that, but I, I have some students who do. So maybe just exploring with your IT department getting some instructions about here's how you can record on your phone and then upload it so they can still satisfy that component. But thank you for mentioning that. That's great.
everyone. I'm going to call us back together. I told you I'd stop talking for a few minutes, but I can't stop for that long. <laughs> Just teasing. Um, but I hope you've had a chance to at least explore that learn activity a bit and maybe branch out into some of the other activity types. You see some read and listen, read and watch kinds of things. Um, we're coming to the end of our time for this first focus session, but Luckily for us, we get to uh, come back together again in a few minutes after a bit of a break. So if you have any questions, um, you've, you've been good about asking your questions as we go. But if you have any questions, certainly feel free to ask. Feel free to document them in that question and answer document that was up in the very top module um, at the top of your Canvas course. Um, and we're going to take a little bit of a break. I think there's coffee, tea, and probably more food because they just keep feeding us and feeding us and feeding us. I think there'll be some refreshments out in the lobby. Um, and then we'll be back in here, let's say at 3.05. Is that good? OK, yeah. Let's say about 3.05, and we'll get started for our second session today. Thanks very much. <laughs>